Hello my dear friends, I am Sujoy and I am back with a new series of tutorials for you where I am telling you how to do project management using network analysis. Well, this is my ninth video in the series. In my previous 8 videos, I have explained the project management from the very basic. This is my third video on critical path method or CPM. In my first video, I have explained how to draw the network diagram from the given activity table and how to find out the critical path using the shortcut technique and some properties of critical path. On my second video on critical path method, I have explained how to solve a critical path problem using most detailed but accurate way. So please watch my previous videos. Link to all of my previous videos is given in the video description below. And today in the third video, I will talk about how to solve a complex problem using critical path method. So let's start. So first some basics, this is called a network diagram and the circles represent event and the arrows represent activity. An activity can be represented using two ways. Number one, using their name or the alphabet like activity A or using the unique pair of start and end event. For example, activity A can also be represented as 1 dash 2 or 1 hyphen 2 where 1 represents the starting event of activity A and 2 represents the ending event of activity A. Next the number next to each activity represent the duration to complete the activity. For example, here the unit is week so activity A needs 1 week to complete. Similarly, activity B needs 2 week to complete and activity A, B and C are called the starting activities since they are starting from the starting event event 1. Starting activities don't have any predecessor activity. To know more about predecessor activity, do watch my first video on critical path method. So this was the basic, let's start the calculation. So first make the table structure and in the first column write down activity and in that write down all the activities from the network diagram in ascending order. So I have written all the activities starting from activity A ending at activity J in ascending order and write down the unique start and end event pair next to each activity. So activity A is also represented as 1.2 where 1 is the starting event of activity A and 2 is the ending event of activity A. Next in duration column write down all the respective duration for each activity next to it from the network diagram and then we have to do the numeric calculation. We have to do two calculation. One is RDS time and in RDS time there are two calculations. Number one is the RDS start time or EST for short and number two is the RDS finish time or EFT for short. Next latest time calculation there also latest start time or LST for short and latest finish time or LFT for short and the total float or TF. I will tell you how to calculate all the values. So let's start. So first we will do the earliest time calculation. For that there are some formulas. Number 1 EFT or the earliest finish time it equals to the earliest start time plus the duration of the activity. So now we will do the earliest time calculation. It is also called the forward pass calculation where we read the network from left hand side to right hand side that is in forward direction. Also in forward pass calculation we read the events left to right. So, so activity A will be read as 1.2. But in backward pass, it will be treated as 2.1 and the RDS time is calculated from top to bottom that is downward. So let's find out the earliest start time and the earliest finish time. So first we'll start with activity A, B and C since they are the starting activities. As I already mentioned, starting activities don't have any predecessor activity. So their EST values will be all zeros. So, the EST value for activity A, B and C will be 0, 0 and 0 and their EFT value will be the EST value plus the duration as in the formula. 
So EFT for activity A will be 0 plus 1 that is 1. EFT for B is 0 plus 2 is 2 and EFT for C is 0 plus 4 equals to 4. Next the activity D which has the predecessor activity of A. That means A must be completed before the D can start and A takes one week to complete. So the starting time or earlier start time for D will be 1 and the EFT will be EST plus the duration. So 1 plus the duration 8 equals to 9. Next the activity E which starts after activity B and activity B takes 2 weeks to complete. So the EST for E is 2 and EFT will be 2 plus 9 that's 11. Next activity F which starts from the event 5. But now there is a trick for activity F. Activity F starts from event 5 and to reach event 5 we can take two paths. One is via A and D which cost 1 plus 8 9 or via B and E which cost 2 plus 9 11. So we will take the maximum value which is 11. So the earliest start time for F will be 11 and the EFT will be 11 plus 7 that is 18. Next activity G which starts after B. So the EST for G will be 2 and EFT will be 2 plus the duration 3 that's 5. Next activity H which starts after 4. So the EST for H will be 4 and the EFT will be 4 plus the duration 6 is 10. Next activity I which starts from event 6. Again we have a choice to make. To reach event 6 we can take this path B and G which cost us 2 plus 3 5 or the path C and H which cost 4 plus 6 10. We will take the maximum value that is 10. So the earliest start time for I will be 10 and the earliest finish time will be 10 plus the duration 5 that is 15 and finally activity J start from the event 7 and to reach event 7 we have 4 paths 1 is via A, D and F which cost 16 weeks or via B, E, F which cost 18 weeks next is via B, G, I which cost 10 weeks and finally via C, H and I which cost 15 weeks. So the maximum value is 18 which is via B, E and F. So we will take this path. So the earliest start time for J will be 18 and the earliest finish time will be 18 plus the duration 10 that's 28. So that's it we have successfully finished calculating the earliest time column from top to bottom that is downward. Our next step is to find out the maximum value among all the values in earliest finish time column. So our maximum value is 28 which is at the bottom. But remember in all questions the value may not be at the bottom. It may be anywhere in the middle. So just look for the maximum value and just copy the value at the bottom of latest finish time or LFT column. That is our first step towards calculating the latest time. Next. From this value, we will subtract the duration value. So 28 minus 10 is 18. Remember the latest time is calculated from bottom to top that is upward. And now I will tell you a shortcut technique for making the table quickly. Just look at activity J. The left side value is 7 and the right side value is 8. So the left side value 18 relates to 7 and the right side value 28 relates to 8 and as I mentioned in backward pass calculation we do the calculation or scan the network from right to left. So for our next activity that is activity I we will take the right hand side value which is 7 and we already know the value for 7 is 18. So we will simply copy the value 18 here 
and from 18 we will subtract the duration as in the formula LST equals to LFT value minus the duration. So 18 minus 5 is 13. Next for activity H, the right hand value is 6 and we know the value for 6 is 13. So we will copy that here. So 13 minus the duration 6 equals to 7. Next activity G which has 6 at right hand side and the value for 6 is 13. Again we will copy that. So 13 minus 3 is 10. Next activity F which has 7 at right hand side and the value for 7 is 18. So we will copy that here. So 18 minus 7 is 11. So simply put, we will pick the values from left hand side. We will write them in right hand side and we will subtract the duration from the right hand side value and we will get the earliest start time value. That is the formula. Next activity E which has 5 at right hand side and we know the value for 5 is 11. We will write it here and 11 minus 9 is 2. <coughs> Next activity D which has 5 at right hand side again and the value for 5 is 11. We will copy that and 11 minus 8 is 3. Next activity C which has 4 at right hand side and the value for 4 is 7. So 7 minus 4 is 3. Next activity B which has 3 at right hand side and the value for 3 is 2. So 2 is written here and 2 minus 2 equals to 0. And finally activity A which has 2 at right hand side and the value for 2 is 3 and 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's it. We have successfully calculated the latest time column. Wasn't it easy using my formula? Now one note for you. Remember, if one number occurs more than one, then we'll make a choice. So for three, we have two threes at left hand side. So we'll compare the values and we'll take the minimum value. So among 2 and 10, we have taken 2. So for latest time, we will take the minimum value and for earliest time, we will take the maximum value. That is the rule. Next, the total float calculation. The formula is given TF equals to LFT minus TFT. So the latest finish time or LFT for activity A is 3 and the EFT for activity A is 1. So 3 minus 1 equals to 2. Similarly, for activity B, the LFT is 2 and EFT is also 2. So 2 minus 2 equals to 0. Next, for activity C, the LFT is 7 and EFT is 4. So 7 minus 4 is 3. So just follow the procedure for each activity and you will get a column like this. Our next step is to look and locate the zeros in the total float column and highlight them and next to each zero write down the unique event pair so for activity b which has first zero the event pair is 1 dash 3 and write it so we have got our first critical activity and the series of critical activity is called the critical path so our first critical activity is 1 to 3. Next, it for activity E or for 3 to 5. So, if we link them, we will get a path. Next, for activity F or for 5 to 7. 5 to 7 and finally 7 to 8. So, if we link all the critical activities, you will get a path which starts from our starting event that is event 1 and will end at our ending event that is event 8. So the path we start from starting event and ends at ending event 
and which has the maximum time duration value is called the critical path. So our critical path has the maximum time duration value among all the paths. So the value is 2 for B plus 9 for E plus 7 for F plus 10 for J. So our critical path is given in event notation 13578 or in activity notation it is called BEFJ and our critical cost is given by 2 plus 9 plus 7 plus 10 that's 28 weeks. So that's it. We have successfully calculated the critical path. So friend this was my video on critical path method example 3. How was the video? Let me know in the comments below. I will have more videos in the series so don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel so that when I upload my next video you get an email if you subscribe. And please don't forget to like and share the video because knowledge is meant to be shared. I have uploaded videos on statistics, numerical methods, business and financial mathematics, operations research, computer science, electrical engineering, Android app reviews, India travel and tourism, street foods, life hacks and many other topics. Also, a series of videos showing how to use your scientific calculators Casio FX901 ES and FX822 MS to do maths easily. You must check my calculator videos for exam. You can get all those videos on my YouTube channel www.youtube.com front slash suja n70. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And still then stay connected by subscribing.